JavaScript is an integral part of web development. It is an era of new client-side frameworks or technologies like Angular JS Gulp, Grunt, etc. Now that provides a better user experience. So TypeScript is another important part of JavaScript that lets you write the code the way you really want to and addresses JavaScript issues. I believe that you're already aware of this fact and that's why you are here. So if you are planning to start your career in web development and you wish to know the skills related to it, now is the right time to dive in when the technology is in its blooming state. Now these TypeScript interview questions will provide you with in-depth knowledge and help you prepare for your interviews. Now before we get started, subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us on trending technologies. Also, if you are looking for an online training certification in web development, check out the link in the description box below. Now let's start with the most important TypeScript interview questions. So the first question is what are the differences between TypeScript and JavaScript? As we all know TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. There are certain similarities and differences. Now talking about the differences, TypeScript is an object-oriented language, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language. Now TypeScript also has a feature known as static typing, whereas JavaScript does not have static typing. Not just that TypeScript also supports modules whereas JavaScript does not support modules. And finally TypeScript supports optional parameter function which is not there in JavaScript. So these were some of the differences between TypeScript and JavaScript. Now the next question is what is TypeScript? Now TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript that compiles to plain JavaScript. It is pure object oriented with classes, interfaces and statically typed programming languages like C Sharp or Java. So you will need a compiler to compile and generate the code in the JavaScript file. Basically TypeScript is the ES6 version of JavaScript with some additional features. Now talking about the syntax of TypeScript you can write it in this way where you have a variable then you have the name of the variable. So here you have a variable var message and then after colon you specify the data type. So here the type is string. So here we specify the string as welcome to Eddie Reka and then we print the message. Now this TypeScript code is written in a file with .ts extension and then compiled into JavaScript using the compiler. You can also write the file in any code editor and the compiler needs to be installed on your platform. Now after the installation the command tsc then file name dot ts will compile the TypeScript code into a plain JavaScript file. Now the next question is why do we need TypeScript? So now that we understood what is TypeScript we also need to know the reasons that why we need TypeScript. Now there are different reasons why a JavaScript developer should consider using TypeScript. Some of these include that using the new features of ECMA script. So TypeScript supports the new ECMA script standards and transpile them to ECMA script targets of your choice. So you can use features of ES 2015 and beyond. Not just that there's static typing as well. Now JavaScript is dynamically typed and does not know what type a variable is until it is actually instantiated at runtime. Now TypeScript adds type support to JavaScript. Then we have the type inference. Now TypeScript makes typing a bit easier and a lot less explicit by the usage of type inference. Even if you don't explicitly type the types they are still there to save you from doing something which otherwise would result in a runtime error. The next reason is definitely a better IDE support. Now the development experience with TypeScript is a great improvement over JavaScript. So there is a wide range of IDEs that have excellent support for TypeScript like the Visual Studio and the VS Code, Atom, Sublime and IntelliJ or the WebStorm. Then there's strict null checking. So errors like you cannot read property X of undefined is common in JavaScript programming. You can avoid most of these kinds of errors since one cannot use a variable that is not known to the TypeScript compiler. And finally it's the interoperability. Now TypeScript is closely related to JavaScript. 
So it has great interoperability capabilities, but some extra work is required to work with JavaScript libraries in TypeScript. Now moving on to the next question, mention some of the features of TypeScript. So there are different features. Now talking about them, the first one is cross-platform. Now the TypeScript compiler can be installed on any operating system such as Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Also, it is object oriented language, which means TypeScript provides features like classes, interfaces, and modules. Thus, it can write object oriented code for client side as well as server side development. Another feature is the static type checking. Now, TypeScript uses static typing and helps type checking at compile time. So, you can find errors while writing the code without running the script. Also, there is an optional static typing. Now, TypeScript also allows optional static typing in case you're using the dynamic typing of JavaScript. Then there's the DOM manipulation. So, you can use TypeScript to manipulate the DOM for adding or removing elements. And finally, there are these ES6 features. Now, TypeScript includes most features of planned ECMA script 2015, which is the ES6 and 7 such as the class interface arrow functions, etc. Now these were some of the features of TypeScript. Moving on to the next question. What are the benefits of using TypeScript? So talking about the advantages of using TypeScript, it is fast, simple, easy to learn and also runs on any browser or JavaScript engine. It is also similar to JavaScript and uses the same syntax and semantics. So you don't need to learn anything from scratch if you're already aware about JavaScript. This also helps the backend developers write front end code faster. Now you can also call the TypeScript code from an existing JavaScript code. Also it works with existing JavaScript frameworks and libraries without any issues. Then the definition file with the .t.ts extension provides support for existing JavaScript libraries like the jQuery d3.js etc and finally it also includes features from ES6 and ES7 that can run in ES5 level JavaScript engines like node.js now these were some of the advantages of TypeScript the next question is what are the disadvantages of TypeScript now TypeScript takes a long time to compile the code also it does not support the abstract classes now if we run the TypeScript application in the browser, a compilation step is required to transform the TypeScript into a JavaScript file. Also the web developers are using JavaScript for decades and TypeScript doesn't bring anything new. Now to use any third party library, the definition file is also a must. And finally, the quality of type definition files is a concern here. Now moving on to the next question. What are the components of TypeScript? Now there are three different types of components in TypeScript which includes a language, a compiler and the language service. Now the language comprises of the syntax, keywords and type annotations. Then we have the TypeScript compiler. Now this compiler that is the TSC converts the instructions written in TypeScript to its JavaScript equivalent. And finally, we have the TypeScript language service. Now the language service exposes an additional layer around the core compiler pipeline editor like applications. The language service supports the common set of typical editor operations. The next question is who developed TypeScript and what is the current stable version available? Now Anders Helsberg developed TypeScript. Also, he is one of the core members of the development team of C Sharp language. So the TypeScript was actually first released in the month of October 1st, 2012 and was labeled version 0.8. But it is developed and maintained by Microsoft under the Apache 2 license. It was also designed for the development of a large application. Now the current stable version of TypeScript is 3.2 which was released on September 30, 2018. TypeScript compiles to simple JavaScript code which runs on any browser that supports the ECMA script 2015 framework. Not just that, it offers support for the latest and evolving JavaScript features. The next question is how to install TypeScript. 
Now there are two main ways to install TypeScript tools. The first one is via the npm command line tool, which is the node.js package manager. So here you just have to use the command npm install hyphen g TypeScript. So this will help you in installing TypeScript in your system. The second method is very easy. You can just install the TypeScript via Visual Studio. So if you use Visual Studio or VS Code IDE, the easiest way to add to Visual Studio or VS Code is to search and add a package or download from the TypeScript website. Also, you can download TypeScript tools for Visual Studio. So these were the simple steps that can be used while downloading or installing the TypeScript in your system. Now moving on to the next question. How do you compile TypeScript files? Now the extension for any TypeScript file is .ts and any JavaScript file is a TypeScript file as it is a superset of JavaScript. So once you change the extension of .js to .ts, your TypeScript file is ready. Now in order to compile any .ts file into .js, we need to use certain commands. So the first command that you can use is take tsc and then TypeScript file name that is you add your file name here. Now suppose you want to compile edureka.ts so you will run the command as tsc edureka.ts. Now while you compile this it will give you the result as edureka.gs which means your TypeScript file has been converted into a JavaScript file here. Now next up, can we combine multiple .ts files into a single .js file? The answer to this is yes, we can combine multiple files. Now while compiling, we need to add the out file that is the output and then the s file name option. So how we can do it is we can just use tsc, then take out file command.js then take your first file.ts then file2.ts and file3.ts now this will compile all the 3.ts files and give you the output of a single command.js file so once you compile this your output will be tsc out file file1.ts file2.ts file3.ts now if you don't provide an output file name the file 2.ts and file 3.ts will be compiled and the output will be placed in file 1.ts. So now the file 1.ts will contain all the JavaScript code. So this was the method of combining multiple files into a single .js file. Now the next question is what are the different types of TypeScript? Now the type system represents the different types of values supported by the language. It checks the validity of the supplied values before they are stored or manipulated by the program. Now the TypeScript can be classified into two types. Now the first one is built-in and the second one is user-defined. Now the built-in TypeScript includes the numbers, string, boolean, void, null and undefined. Whereas the user-defined type includes the enumerations, classes, interfaces, arrays and tuples. So these are the two different types of TypeScript that we use commonly. Moving on to the next question, list out some of the built-in data types in TypeScript. Now in TypeScript, the built-in data types are also known as primitive data types. And this list includes numbers, string, boolean, null, undefined and void. Now talking about number, it represents the number type values. The numbers are stored as floating point values in TypeScript. Then we have the string. So a string represents a sequence of characters stored as Unicode UTF-16 code. Then talking about Boolean, this represents a logical value. So when we use the Boolean type, we get the output only in either true or false. Now null represents a variable whose value is undefined. So it is not possible to directly reference the null type value itself. Then we have undefined. The undefined type denotes all uninitialized variables. And finally we have void. Now void is the return type of the functions that do not return any type of value. The next question is what are variables in TypeScript and how to create them? Now a variable is a named space in the memory which is used to store values. 
The type syntax for declaring a variable in TypeScript includes a colon after the variable name followed by its type. It is similar to JavaScript and we use the var keyword to declare a variable. Now while declaring a variable in TypeScript, you need to follow certain rules. The first thing is the variable name must be an alphabet or numeric digit. But also you cannot start the name with digits. Also it cannot contain spaces and special characters except the underscore and the dollar sign. Next up, what are the different ways of declaring a variable? Now there are four ways of declaring a variable. The first one is declaring a type and a value in a single statement. So here we write it as var identifier colon type annotation and then provide the value. So this is the first way we're declaring the type and the value in the single statement itself. The next one is to declare type without the value. So you can just write var identifier colon type annotation. You need not specify the value here. The third one is to declare its value without any type. So all you can do is take the variable and the identifier and directly declare its value without the type. The final way is to declare it without any value or any type. So all you can do is just take the var keyword and then the identifier without any type or any value. So these were the four different ways of declaring a variable. Next up, is it possible to compile .ts automatically with real-time changes in the .ts file? Now the answer to this question is yes. We can compile the .ts automatically with real-time changes in the .ts file. Now this can be done by using the watch compiler option. So what you can do is you can write tsc hyphen hyphen watch then put your file name that is file1.ts. Now this command first compiles your file1.ts in file1.js and watch for the file changes. So if there is any change detected, it will compile the file once again. Here we need to ensure that the command prompt must not be closed on running with the watch option. So this is how you can compile your .ts automatically with real-time changes in the .ts file. Moving on to the next question, what are the object-oriented terms supported by TypeScript? Now TypeScript supports different object-oriented terms. The first one are the modules, then we have classes, then interface, then inheritance, data types and finally member functions. These are the different terms that are there in TypeScript and these are the terms that you can use and also work in while writing your code in TypeScript. Now these are the terms that we use in TypeScript, but what are interfaces in TypeScript? So this is our next question about interfaces. So the interface is a structure that defines the contract in your application. It defines the syntax for classes to follow. It contains only the declaration of the members and also it is the responsibility of the deriving class to define the members. Now the TypeScript compiler uses interface for type checking and checks whether the object has a specific structure or not. Talking about the syntax, all we need to do is take the interface keyword and then pass the interface name. Now inside this we will take the variables declaration and the methods declaration as well. So this was the syntax for interfaces and also what are interfaces in TypeScript actually. Now the next question is what are classes in TypeScript? And list out some of its features. Now TypeScript introduced classes so that they can avail the benefits of object oriented techniques like the encapsulation and abstraction. Now the class in TypeScript is compiled to plain JavaScript functions by the TypeScript compiler to work across platforms and browsers. Now a class includes a constructor, properties and methods. Here is an example for the classes. So first we take a class keyword and then we declare the class name. So here the name is employee. Now inside this class we can pass different properties, methods and attributes. So here we have one property as the employee ID which is a number in data type. Then we have the employee name which is a string. Then we create a constructor with the ID which is a number and then the name which is a string. 
and then use the this keyword in order to map the employee name with name and the employee ID with ID. And finally, we just return the value that we want to get here. So here we have taken one function as get salary, which is also a number data type, which will return the value as 40,000. So this is how you use the classes in TypeScript and also how you declare different properties and methods inside it. Now talking about some of the features of a class, it has inheritance, encapsulation, polymorphism and abstraction. Now let's move on to the next question. What are the access modifiers supported by TypeScript? Now TypeScript supports access modifiers public, private and projected which determine the accessibility of a class member. So for public, all the members of the class, its child classes and the instance of the class can be accessed. But for protected, all the members of the class and its child classes can access them, but the instance of the class cannot access. And finally, for private, only the members of the class can access them. If an access modifier is not specified, it is implicitly public as that matches the convenient nature of JavaScript. Now moving on, how is TypeScript an optionally statically typed language? Now TypeScript is referred to as optionally statically typed, which means you can ask the compiler to ignore the type of a variable. Using any data type, we can assign any type of value to the variable. So TypeScript will not give any error checking during compilation. So now here is an example. We take the var keyword and then an unknown type and pass anything. So basically here you can pass any value. Now we use this keyword unknown type and first we pass a string that is welcome to Edureka and in the next one we pass false which is a boolean data type. So using the any data type what you can do is you can pass any sort of data type in this. It can either be a string or a number or boolean. So it will not give you any error. Now the next question is what are modules in TypeScript? So a module is a powerful way of creating a group of related variables, functions, classes and interfaces. It can be executed within its own scope but not in the global scope. Basically you cannot access the variables, functions, classes and interfaces declared in a module outside the module directly. So a module can be created by using the export keyword and can be used in other modules by using the import keyword. So here is an example. You can take the module keyword then the module name and take a class then export anything such as here we are exporting the sum of x and y to as x plus y. So here we are using the export keyword but we can also use it in other modules by using the import keyword. Next up, what is the difference between the internal module and the external module? Now the internal modules group the classes, interfaces, functions, variables into a single unit and can be exported in another module. But the external modules are useful in hiding the internal statements of the module definitions and show only the methods and parameters associated with the declared variable. Also, the internal modules were a part of the earlier version of TypeScript, but the external modules are known as a module in the latest version only. Now talking about the internal modules, these are the local or exported members of their modules. Whereas the external modules are separately loaded bodies of code referenced using external module names. Finally, the internal modules are declared using module declarations that specify their name and body. Whereas an external module is written as a separate source file that contains at least one import or export declaration. The next question is what is namespace in TypeScript and how to declare it? Now the namespace groups functionalities logically. These maintain the legacy code of TypeScript internally. It encapsulates the features and objects that share certain relationships. A namespace is also known as internal module. A namespace can also include interfaces, classes, functions and variables to support a group of related functionalities. Now talking about the syntax for a namespace, you just have to use the keyword namespace and take the namespace name, then export your interface and then your class. 
So in the first step you export your interface and in the next step you export the class. So this was about the namespace and TypeScript. Now moving on to the next question. Does TypeScript support function overloading? Now the answer to this is yes. TypeScript supports function overloading, but the implementation is odd. So when you overload in TypeScript, you only have one implementation with multiple signatures. So for example, here we have declared a class as customer. Then we have taken the name that is string then ID which is a number. Then we have added the ID with the number and added the name and the string and then another value which is of any data type. Now if the value and the type of value is equal to number here we need to do something and then if the value and type of value is equal to string here we need to print something as well because I've given the value to be any data type. So basically here anything can be taken either a number or a string. So the first signature has one parameter of type number whereas the second signature has a parameter of type string. Now the third function contains the actual implementation and has a parameter of type any. The implementation then checks for the type of the supplied parameter and executes a different piece of code based on the supplier parameter type. So this is how function overloading works in TypeScript. Now moving on to the next question explain decorators in TypeScript. Now a decorator is a special kind of declaration that can be applied to classes methods accessor property or parameter. Now decorators are functions that are prefixed at expression symbol where expression must evaluate to a function that will be called at runtime with information about the decorated declaration. Now TypeScript decorators serves the purpose of adding both annotations and metadata to the existing code in a declarative way. To enable experimental support for decorators, you need to enable the experimental decorators compiler option either on the command line or in the tsconfig.json. Now for the command line, you can write it as $tsc, then target es5 and experimental decorators. But while working with tsconfig.json, you have to just write compiler options then your target as ES5 and experimental decorators to be true. So these are the two different ways of declaring the decorators in TypeScript. One is in the command line and one using the tsconfig.json. Now moving on, what are mixins? Now in JavaScript, mixins are a way of building up classes from reusable components and then build them by combining simpler partial classes. Now the idea is simple instead of a class A extending class B to get its functionality. Function B takes class A and returns a new class with this added functionality. Here the function B is a mixin. So now that you've understood what are mixins, how does TypeScript support optional parameters in function? Now unlike JavaScript the TypeScript compiler throws an error if you try to invoke a function without providing the exact number and types of parameters as declared in its function signature. To overcome this problem you can also use optional parameters by using a question mark sign. It indicates that the parameters which may or may not receive a value can be appended with a question mark to mark them optional. So here is an example where we have the function demo and the argument one and argument two. Now here in this example argument one is always required and argument two is an optional parameter because we have used the question mark with the argument two. It is an optional parameter but there's no question mark with argument one. This means it is always required. Now moving on to the next question. What is scope variable? Now the scope is a set of objects variables and function and the JavaScript can have a global scope variable and a local scope variable. So you can declare a variable in two different scopes. The first is the local scope which is a function object that is used within the functions. The next one is a global scope variable. You can use this window object out of function and within the functions. So these were the two different types of scope variable in TypeScript. Now let's move on to the next question. 
So how can you debug a TypeScript file? Now to debug any TypeScript file, you need a .js source map file. So you have to compile the .ts file with the source map flag to generate a source map file. So for this, you can use the command $tsc then hyphen source map then your file name .ts. So this will create the file.js and file.js.map. And the last line of file.js would be a reference of the source map file. So you will get it like source mapping URL as file.js.map. Moving on, what is TypeScript Definition Manager and why do we need it? Now, TypeScript Definition Manager, that is TSD, is a package manager used to search and install TypeScript definition files directly from the community driven definitely typed repository. Now, if you want to use some jQuery in your .ts file, you can use the command as $document.ready function and then your jQuery code. So here when you try to compile it by using the TSC, it will give a compile time error that is it cannot find the name dollar. Now here you need to inform the TypeScript compiler that dollar belongs to jQuery. Now in order to do this the TSD comes into play. So you can download the jQuery type definition file and include it in your .ts file. So this is exactly why we need the TypeScript definition manager. So this is exactly why we need the TypeScript definition manager. So now that you've understood how it works, Moving on to the next question. What are the steps to include the type definition file? Now there are various steps involved in this process of including the type definition file. So first of all, you have to install the TSD. Now for this you can use the command dollar npm install TSD hyphen G. Here npm is our node.js package manager. So using that we are installing the TSD minus G. Now once you are done installing this the next step is in TypeScript directory you have to create a new TypeScript project. So for that you just have to run the code as $TSD in it. So this will create a new TypeScript project. Now once this is done you have to install the definition file for jQuery. Now for this you have to use the command as TSD query jQuery hyphen hyphen action install. Now this command will download and create a new directory containing the jQuery definition file which ends with .d.ts. Now you have to include the definition file by updating the TypeScript file to point to the jQuery definition. So for that you have your reference path suppose the typings jQuery then the jQuery.d.ts. So then you have to write $document.ready function and then whatever you have to perform inside this. Finally, you have to compile it again. Now this time the JS file will be generated without any error. Hence the need for the TSD helps us to get the type definition file for the required framework. So these were the different steps involved in the type definition file. Now moving on to the next question. What is TypeScript declare keyword? Now JavaScript libraries or frameworks don't have TypeScript declaration files. But if you want to use them in the TypeScript file without any compilation error, you have to use the declare keyword. Now the declare keyword is used for ambient declarations and methods where you want to define a variable that may exist somewhere else. Now if you want to use the library in our TypeScript code, you can use the code as declare where my library. Now once you use this the TypeScript runtime will assign the my library variable as any type. Now moving on to the next question. What is the default parameters function in TypeScript? Now the function parameters can be assigned values by default. A parameter can be declared as optional and default both at the same time. So for example here we have let discount equal to function price rate. So here in the function we have passed two parameters. The first one is a price which is of data type number. Then we have the rate which is also number and we have also specified the value as 0.40. So now here we are returning the value to be price into rate. 
and then we have another parameter as discount 500. So where the discount is 500, the result will be 200. But where the discount is 500 and 0.45 is the rate, the result will be 225. Now here rate is a default parameter as number in discount in function. Now if we pass the value in the discounts rate parameter, it will use this. Otherwise, it will use the default value as 0.40. So in the first one, we have not specified anything. So it will take the rate as 0.40, which will give the result as 200. But in the next one, we have specified it to be 0.45, which will give the result as 225. Now the next question is what is tsconfig.json file? Now the tsconfig.json file is a file which is in JSON format. Now in the tsconfig.json file, you can specify different options to tell the compiler how to compile the current project. The presence of a tsconfig.json file in a directory indicates that the directory is the root of a TypeScript project. Now here is an example of a sample tsconfig.json file. So here we have different compiler options like declaration, then we have emit decorator, metadata, experimental decorators, module, module resolution, remove common source map, etc. So these are basically different components of the tsconfig.json file. Now moving on to the next question. What are generics in TypeScript? Now TypeScript generics is a tool that provides a way of creating reusable components. It is able to create components that can work with a variety of data type rather than a single data type. Also, it provides type safety without compromising the performance or productivity. Generics allow us to create generic classes, generic functions, generic methods, and generic interfaces. Now, in generics, a type parameter is written between the open and close brackets, which makes it strongly typed collections. It also uses a special kind of type variable that is the T which denotes types. So you can see here is an example where we have the function as identity and we have the type variable that is denoted inside the brackets as T. Then we have passed an argument T. Then we return that argument and for the output, the first output will be the identity string which is edureka, then identity number 117. So here the way of specifying these identities are different. We write them inside the open and close brackets and specify the type. So the first one is a string. The second one is a number. Now when we take the output for both of these, the first output will be edureka and the second output will be 117. That is any number. The next question is what is the difference between interface and type statements? Now talking about interface, it is an interface declaration introduces a named object type. Whereas a type allies declaration introduces a name for any kind of type including primitive, union and intersection types. Now interface can be named in an extends or implements clause. Whereas the type allies for an object type literal cannot be named in an extends or implements clause. Then for the interface, you can create a new name that is used everywhere. Whereas for type, you cannot create any new name. In case of interfaces, it can also have multiple merged declarations, but types cannot have multiple merged declarations. So these were some of the differences between an interface and the type statements. Now moving on to the next question, what is JSX in TypeScript? Now JSX is an embeddable XML like syntax and it is meant to be transformed into a valid JavaScript. Now JSX became popular with the React framework. So TypeScript supports embedding type checking and compiling JSX directly into JavaScript. So if you want to use JSX in your file, you need to name your file with a .tsx extension and enable JSX option. So now that you know what is JSX in TypeScript, let's see what are all the JSX modes TypeScript supports. Now TypeScript consists of three JSX modes. The first one is preserve, then you have react and then react native. Now the preserve mode keeps the JSX as part of the output to be further consumed by another transform step. 
also the output will have a dot JSX file extension now the react mode emits react dot create element does not need to go through a JSX transformation before use and the output will have a dot JS file extension now the react native mode is the equivalent of the preserve and it keeps all the JSX but the output has a dot JS file extension instead now moving on what are ambients and transcripts and when to use them now ambient declarations tell the compiler about the actual source code that exists somewhere else if these source codes do not exist at runtime and we try to use them then it will break without any warning now ambient declarations files are like doc files if the source changes the docs need to be kept updated and if the ambient declaration file is not updated then you will get compiler errors also it allows us to safely and easily use existing popular javascript libraries like the jquery angular js node.js etc moving on to the next question what is a typescript map file now the typescript map file is a source map file that holds information about our original files the dot map files are source map files that let tools map between the emitted javascript code and the typescript source files that created it also debuggers can consume these files so we can debug the typescript file instead of the javascript file now moving on what is type assertions in typescript now the type assertion works like a type casting in other languages but it does not perform type checking or restructuring of data in other languages like c sharp and java now the type casting comes with runtime support whereas type assertion has no impact on runtime however type assertions are used purely by the compiler and provide hints to the compiler on how we want our code to be analyzed for example we take the let employee code and then give the data type as any so we can pass either a string or a number or any data type then we have the employee code which is a number code now when we take the type of our employee code the output will be numbered here because here we have specified a type now let's move on to the next question so what are rest parameters now the rest parameter is used to pass zero or more values to a function it is declared by prefixing the three dot characters before the parameter it also allows the functions to have a variable number of arguments without using the arguments object it is very useful where we have an undetermined number of parameters now this was about the rest parameters moving on what are the rules to declare rest parameters now while declaring the rest parameters you need to follow certain rules so only one rest parameter is allowed in a function and then it must be of an array type and finally it must be a last parameter in the parameter list now talking about the example for rest parameters here we have declared a function sum inside which we have a b and different numbers where the parameters are not specified so for result a we have declared a for loop as variable i equals to 0 and the length is less than b dot length i plus plus and the result will be result plus b of i now here we are printing the result so for result 1 we have the sum values to be 2 and 4 and for result 2 we have it as 2 4 6 and 8 so here we haven't specified the number of parameters you can either take it as a b or you can pass various numbers for the b parameter as well because here we have not specified any particular number you can specify the length so b can be of either length 3 so where you can pass three different values for b that is 4 6 and 8 and we have passed the value 2 for a so this was about the rest parameters now moving on what is as syntax in typescript now the as is the additional syntax for type assertion in typescript the reason for introducing the as syntax is that the original syntax conflicted with JSX. So here you can see an example where first thing is the employee code whose data type is any and we have passed a number. That is the EMP code. The next one is the employee code 
where we have given it as code as number. Now while using the TypeScript with JSX only the as style assertions are allowed. So basically we are passing the data type to be number in this particular section. Now moving on explain the enum in TypeScript. Now enums or enumerations are a TypeScript data type that allows us to define a set of named constants. So using enums make it easier to document intent or create a set of distinct cases. It is basically a collection of related values that can be numeric or string values. Here is an example of the enum. So we use the keyword as enum and then suppose we are taking the gender. So inside gender we can pass the value as either male, female or other. Now when we take the output for gender dot male, it will pass you the location or how we can access an enum value by its number value as well. So if we just take gender dot male, it can give you the output as zero or we can just take gender one. So here male is zero female is one and other is two. So this will give you the output as female. So this is basically how you can access an enum value. So we can either take it with its number value or specify its location. So this is how enum works in TypeScript. Moving on to the next question explain relative and non relative module imports. Now relative imports can be used for your own modules that are guaranteed to maintain their relative location at runtime and a relative import starts with a slash or a dot slash or a dot dot slash. But a non relative import can be resolved relative to base URL or through path mapping. In other words, we can use the non relative paths when importing any of our external dependencies. So in the relative section, you can see that you can just import any entry from your dot slash components dot entry or you can take any default headers that is the dot dot slash constant slash HTTP. But in case of non relative, you can import as dollar from jQuery or import component from any angular slash core or from anywhere that you're accessing basically through path mapping. Moving on to the next question. What is an anonymous function? Now an anonymous function is a function that is declared without any named identifier. These functions are dynamically declared at runtime. Also anonymous functions can accept inputs and return outputs just as standard functions do. It is usually not accessible after its initial creation. So here is an example where we have let my add keyword inside that we have the function as X which is a number Y which is a number and then another number. So here we are returning a plus B and for this we just have to take the output as my add. So we're just taking another anonymous function in the first one and specifying its parameters. Now the next question is what is method overriding in TypeScript. Now if the subclass or the child class has the same method as declared in the parent class. It is known as method overriding. Basically, it redefines the base class methods in the derived class or child class. Now, there are certain rules for method overriding as well. So, for that, the method must have the same name as in the parent class. Also, it must have the same parameter as in the parent class. And finally, there must be an ISA relationship or an inheritance at least. Now moving on to the final question. What is a lambda or an arrow function? Now the ES6 version of TypeScript provides shorthand syntax for defining the anonymous function that is for function expressions. These arrow functions are also called lambda functions. A lambda function is a function without a name whereas the arrow function omits the function keyword. So here we have an example where we have the let keyword then we have taken the sum and specified two different parameters that is X and Y and we are returning the value to be X plus Y. Now while printing the value we are just passing the values to X and Y. So if we take the value of X to be 10 and Y to be 20 it will return 30. Now in this example the arrow function after number is a lambda operator. And the x plus y is the body of the function. And where we have specified the x as number and y as number are basically the inline parameters. 
So these were the top 50 TypeScript interview questions that you must know about and this will help you in your interviews that you are going to attend for any web development role. So I hope these interview questions will help you in your interviews and in case you have attended an interview in the recent past do post to those questions in the comment section and we will help you answer them as well. You can also comment any questions that are there in your mind which you might face in your interview. So don't forget to let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning.